Hey, what's up, Year Elevens? I hope you guys went okay with、uh, the practice of four A and B.、Um, yesterday's video was really on a rush, and、uh, so I have decided to make a, another quick one to catch up with some of the challenge practice、uh, that you potentially have.、Uh, then、um, we have a Very quick go through a、uh, walk through of four C.、Um, basically, the questions I pick from four A was question eight. I didn't pick any question of four B because I thought like you know、um, they're quite similar in a way,、um, despite the graph looks completely different. If you know how to draw one type of the graph, you can pretty much use、um, the same technique、uh, to draw the other one.、Um, So question eight from four A. This is the question I picked. Um, um, I mean we don't have to go through all of these questions. Let's say I'll just pick a random one. Uh, eight B. Let's go through these together. Remember last time when we went through uh the question, the very first challenge to draw a rectangular hyperbolus is. Um, to really, you know, trying to deal with the、uh, algebra fraction, and one way to deal with that is by using long division, right? Because long division is the most、uh, common approach to simplify the algebra fraction.、Um, in this case, if you got y equals three x plus two over two x minus two, it's not that easy to go directly rearrange the top term. And even if you use long division, you have to be very careful with、uh, the coefficient we choose. Why? Because let's see if you got three x plus two divided by two x minus two. You're looking for two x times something will end up with three x. But what is that? Well, obviously it's a whole, not a whole number, isn't it? Right. So two times a number give you three. That's gonna be A fraction, and that fraction should be three over two. Why? Because two and two got cancelled. Then you got three left over on the numerator's position. So that's why two times three over two give you three. To begin with, it's pretty pretty tough because you know when you apply this division,、uh, you didn't end up with whole number, but instead you end up with the improper fraction. Then we multiply three over two into Two、uh, uh, x minus two, you end up with three x. Then minus on the other side, you go with three over two times by two. Again,、um, that's the second term over here, and that will give you three. So we, you end up with three x minus three. Then, then let's have a look at the reminder. Two take away negative three. Just be very careful because that was minus.、Um, Two take away negative three should give you positive five. So that indicate we should end up with、um, the 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 remainder is actually five, and what we need to end up with is three over two plus the remainder. We can put that onto the top, which is five over two x minus two over here, right? Um, so basically,、um, you you can always、uh, check your answer by looking back to the original original answer or at the back of the textbook.、Um, so basically, what you do over here is you got three over two, and on one hand, on the other hand, you got. 2x minus 2 on the other hand, so these are the two areas we need to pay attention with.、Um, so horizontally, and you got 2x minus 2 over here, which is slightly different to what we have demonstrated from the previous stage.、Uh, how I'm going to deal with that is you can take a, a factor two out, leaving x minus one, by solving x minus one. Equals zero, you get x equals one. So basically, that will give you the transformed isotope, which is the, the vertical one. So basically, you got a new 
transform the isotope over here, which is x equals 1. On the other hand, this guy, 3 over 2, which is the horizontal isotope, which has been already represented over here, you just go ahead and draw it. That's roughly over here, horizontal 1 and y equals 3 over 2. Then the last thing we need to check is since there's no reflection at this stage, the orientation of the rectangular um, hyperbola has not been altered. So therefore, the graph should be bounded by this set of isotopes. So that will be it, right? Um, so basically, every time when we go ahead trying to hand plot the rectangular hyperbolas, um, it's it's really really important that we we know how to uh, first of all allocate the transform the isotope whenever we have so that we can make sure that the graph is pre bounded to it. Then we pay attention to any possible reflection um, of the original graph. Then we can finally draw the graph properly. All right, so that's a very quick catch up with. Uh, the questions, uh, the concept that we learned from the previous stage. Uh, we shall quickly move on to 4C. 4C is, to me, it's almost like in time new as well, uh, because in the previous textbook, in the old edition, we, instead of talking about a graph of y squared equals x, um, we used to only talk about y equals root x, right? So the square root graph. Um, the new textbook has updated to make it fully aware of like the square, taking the square on both sides to end up with y square equals x. The difference between these two kind of a graph is I would like to start in this way. If you know how to draw y equals square root of x, um, which start from the origin, then go up and bend it a little bit downwards. So that's y equals square root of x. Um, you just need to slightly upgrade that to, uh, to turn that into y square equals x. So basically, um, by taking the square of it, uh, it's kind of open up the single wing, but also reflected around the x axis. So you, you, you kind of having uh, a slightly different way in this way, and you got the other half, uh, uh, which is symmetrical around the x-axis. So that that's the way we kind of try to understand, you know, y squared equals x. Uh, looks a little bit weird because usually when you draw the graph, it will be always y in terms of x, right? So now it's x in terms of y, right? How do we interpret that? It's really really important. Another way to uh, sort of try to understand the, the graph of y squared equals x is, if you have a look at this graph over here, it's kind of like a parabola, isn't it, right? Like the ones we learned from chapter three. Um, so one way of understanding that is, if you can rotate it like this way, yeah? If you rotate it this way, what would you see? What kind of a graph is that? That's parabola, isn't it? So it's kind of like I'm drawing x equals y square, um, but the base is set around x axis, a uh, y axis instead of x axis. Yeah, um, that's the second way of understanding this. But anyhow, um, no matter which way we uh, approach our understanding, uh, the graph looks really weird. Um, we just need to uh, accept the fact that it, it is not an ordinary graph and all our examples will be based on this, right? So y squared equals x, just remember this shape. Uh, then we can move on to quickly have a look at one of the example. Um, the example I chose was example four. Um, uh, by all means, I, I'm not tend to actually go through both parts. Uh, I reckon maybe part B is slightly more challenged, right? So let's just get rid of part A 
we can have a quickly look at a part B together. What we actually have here is for part B, um, as you can see, we don't even have uh, a y square term, a complete y square term on one hand. Instead, we got some residual here. We got 2y. One way to do with that is that it remembers of perfect square, remember completing square method. I kind I can kind of uh, create a situation of a perfect square on the left hand side until I create y square plus 2y plus 1. Yeah, because y square plus 2y plus 1 is y plus 1 square, right? So that's a perfect square. That will make perfect sense. Uh, otherwise, I can't really deal with this 2y over here because 2y cannot be left alone. Um, According to the original format, you know, we got y squared equals x, and you know, on the left hand side has to be a perfect square, uh, square term. So how do I create that? Well, remember on the equation, um, in order to keep it balanced, if I add one on the left hand side, I also need to add one on the right hand side. So I'll be adding a one on top of three. Um, we can do a bit of a rearrangement on the left hand side is y plus 1 square on the right hand side that will be 2x plus um, 4. Then uh, let's take a look at this question again. Uh, we got y plus 1 square equals 2x plus 4. So how I'm going to draw it? Remember we can still actually doing a bit of like a mechanical way um, but since uh, the whole uh, graph has been, you know, rotated, um, the traditional way might not work. Remember previously when you're just adding or subtracting the numbers on x, you move to the left to the right. Um, but, you know, since you rotate it, that might not work perfectly for the mechanical uh, method. So in this case, we roughly know, we can still roughly know, you know, um, you know, if you draw y equals, uh, you know, x plus 1 square minus 4, um, there was a, a turning point form for a parabola. Uh, the turning point is negative 1 comma 4. For this one, you know, it's just rotate the version. It's kind of like... Uh, you can still sort of like a calling it a turning point, but it's not it's not ready. Yeah, you got 2x plus 4 over here um, So one way of doing that I reckon is um, If you are saying uh, I want to do it in a ro rotated way uh, Still want to get around about turning point um, you know the original version uh, say in uh, in parabola, uh, you will find out a turning point negative 1, negative 4, um, the opening is facing up. Uh, for this graph, we need to do a little bit of rearrangement, right? So let's say um, I divide both sides by 2, then 2x will becomes x, 4 becomes 2, then I move this 2. Uh, on the right to the left by subtracting it I got this form right so this is kind of like a turning point form but it's just a horizontal rotated turning point form right so this guy and this guy um, so in this way uh, we can give it a go to draw our graph right but to be noticed that the base has been sort of changed previously when you draw uh, the parabola um, x axis the base right and um, then you, you draw the graph according to that now the y becomes the base um, so for this plus one we can roughly get negative one here right but just be careful that's y value yeah uh, for this negative two is just minus two right so if you want to draw that still on the Cartesian plan, um, I will say that's going to be corresponding to negative 2 because that's x value, um, then 
negative 1, right? So if you go for negative 2, uh, negative 1, that will be roughly here, right? Instead of drawing, you know, having the, the opening of the parabola facing up, this one is facing to the right. So I reckon the graph will be roughly look like this, right? Then later on, um, feel free to substitute the values uh, of x equal to zero and trying to find, you, know, you can go ahead and find out the y intercepts. Um, so that, these are the trivials that you guys can actually move on um, to solve it. But the basic idea of drawing this y squared equals x graph is very special. You know, the way we treat this is kind of like a rotated parabola. Um, that's my current understanding. So once you get along with this, you can do a whole lot of arrangement, making x the subject still turn that into some sort of turning point form. And just be careful when you read or interpret it, uh, it's x in terms of y, uh, not y in terms of x. Okay, so. I hope this video will be helpful, guys. Uh, and you know, I like we all do. We I making mistakes. Um, you know, uh, if I make any silly mistakes, if you find anything wrong in this video, uh, that's uh, uh, you always welcome to actually question me when I come back. Um, but I hope at least this will give us uh, some help uh, in terms of demonstrating the examples. Um, I shall see you guys soon.